Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Reggae Method Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, can pop up over the past 24 or so hours. Several months can change an awful lot in IT. Last year, the CTO of Dell believed that there was no way that AMD's Epic offerings would make a meaningful impact in the server market, particularly for Dell's own offerings. Obviously, Dell are pretty synonymous when it comes to providing solutions for the data center, but the CTO of the company did not believe that AMD's epic range of CPUs would prove to be that viable of a contender for Intel's own Xeon lineup of CPUs. Therefore, in his own words, he did not believe that the market would become, quote, a duopoly. But, <laughs> Yeah, but things change because in a recent interview with itpro.co.uk, a Dell representative said, and I quote, that Dell expects triple its Epic server offerings by the end of this year. Furthermore, it will expand its offerings by launching new servers based upon AMD's own 7nm Epic Rome CPUs. Currently, AMD have about 5% of the server CPU market thanks to Nepal's, thanks to Epic, but they are planning to change this significantly with the introduction of 7nm. It's going to be really interesting to see if they hit the double digit figures that they themselves are predicting. And obviously, this is going to put a lot of pressure on Intel over the next 6 to 12 months especially as the company are rolling out their own range of processors, but obviously with delays on their own 10M uh, process, it's really giving AMD the chance to somewhat leapfrog them and at least establish themselves significant uh, players in the market. AMD's Ryzen 3000 series, also known as Matisse, has been stealing a lot of press coverage recently, but that isn't to say that the Threadripper 3 series, also known as Castle Peak, is not highly anticipated for HEDT enthusiasts. It wasn't too long ago we actually saw a roadmap appear which did point to the Castle Peak platform launch at the latter part of this year. It looked like it was around the fourth quarter, but something different has happened. AMD themselves have released their first quarter earnings report, and yes, we see products that we already know, like for example, Threadripper 2 is there, we see Radeon 7, and obviously they're really hammering home that stuff, but they are also letting us know what products are going to be released in the future. And this includes, of course, Ryzen 3000 series. We also see an updated GPU map, or I say slightly updated GPU map, it's just ever so slightly looking different, although the content remains identical. So the question is, what the heck is going on? Why are AMD removing the Threadripper 3000 series from this roadmap? Well, there's a couple of reasons we could potentially go with. The first is it was just an oversight. I highly doubt it, but it is possible that they just wanted to remove it. Perhaps they're not feeling 100% confident of the release date of the platform, or maybe they just didn't feel it was something that they wanted to put in this particular document. That is definitely one possibility. Another possibility is that they are delaying it for some specific reason. For example, it could be that the chiplets are going to be in what they consider to be a short supply. Don't forget that the Zen 2 cores are going to be used for a lot of different things, including, but not limited to, the Ryzen 3000 series. Maybe AMD predict that that's going to be very popular and they don't want uh, CPU shortages by also uh, funneling those processes into the next generation Threadripper as well. But also, those same CPU cores will also be found uh, within the next generation Epic, Roam. So maybe AMD is thinking, hmm, well, it's just better for us to funnel as many CPU cores uh, to Epic as well as to the desktop as humanly possible, and then we can kind of go with Threadripper later on. Let's say a worst case scenario for Matisse for a moment. Let's say a 12 or 16 core processor that hits around 45, 4600 megahertz. So it doesn't hit 5 gigahertz and instead hits around 43 to 4600. Let's just call it 4500. All right. Well, that's still more than enough for the average user of HEDT. Even if you're doing like 3D rendering, 3D modeling, if you're doing a huge amount of multitasking, then obviously additional cores. If you're doing a lot of virtual machine work, obviously additional cores can be useful. And there are definitely some workloads that I expect 
They've sold the 2990WX, which has 32 cores, 64 threads, to have an advantage over even a 16 core, uh, 32 thread uh, Matisse part, which is clocked at higher, uh, much higher frequencies than what the Ryzen, uh, sorry, Threadripper 2000 series is. But you also need to take into consideration the fact that we have uh, more memory channels. We also have a larger amount of I.O. because obviously you've got more PCIe loans. Some applications, particularly games, still rely on just a few threads for their performance. So, yeah, I do suspect that for a lot of users, Threadripper uh, 2000 may seem just a lot less appealing. So I wouldn't be surprised if Matisse launching does really impact the sales of the uh, lower end Threadripper SKUs particularly. So if AMD do decide to delay uh, the next generation of Threadrippers until let's say, I don't know, the first quarter of next year, it would mean that they have a lot of SKUs which I suspect are going to be on heavy discount. One last thing for AMD before we move on to other subjects, and that is Narve. There are rumours right now that Narve is actually having issues hitting the same clock speeds as what AMD have managed to get Vega 20, Vega 7nm, Radeon 7, whatever you want to call it, uh, running at. And apparently multiple engineers now at the company are going to be extremely glad when the uh, Narve project is over. I can tell you from my own digging and a couple of people who have told me things that I have heard uh, Narve has been, quote, a nightmare to work on. Uh, and indeed, I've covered this topic a couple of times before uh, from different sources uh, on my own. But I do find the clock speed thing really interesting, the fact that they're having such difficulty hitting those clock frequencies. Because we actually have the PS5 APU, uh, which supposedly is leaked online, although obviously no one knows if it definitely is. And you can actually read the uh, identifier string using the AMD decoder. And what we can see, of course, is 1600 megahertz for the base frequency, for 200 megahertz for the boost frequency. Although, let's just be honest, consoles don't really boost, so most likely that's going to be the clock speed it runs at when, say, running a 3D game. So, I imagine games it's going to be 3200 megahertz, but we also see the GPU frequency here of 1.8 gigahertz, we see 18. So, I would be curious why the desktop parts don't reach that speed. There have also been multiple reports now that the next generation PlayStation is going to hit around the 12 uh, to 13 TFLOP range, which means it does actually have over 50 compute units, assuming it's running at uh, 1800 megahertz for the clock speed. And now to finish off the video, Intel have finished its open source drivers for its Generation 11 graphics for both Vulkan as well as OpenGL. The drivers are referred to as i915 for OpenGL and Vulkan drivers are referred to as ANV. So this basically means now Generation 11 is fully supported in the drivers and this means that according to the patch notes for the drivers, we should be seeing more or less full performance from the iGPU. This is contrary to what we had previously because when you were trying to run an open GL or Vulk a Vulcan title before with a Generation 11 hardware, there would basically be a warning which would tell you, hey, uh, Generation 11 isn't fully supported yet, this is beta, so you could have crashes, you could have instability, and of course performance might vary compared to what the final revisions would be. Intel themselves have actually stopped considering Generation 11 drivers as alpha. This actually happened back in March. So now we have major Linux distributions which will feature out of the box support for Generation 11 graphics. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, well, you know what to do. You can like and share this video because that helps us out a lot. And you can also subscribe to the channel. You can find us down below on the social medias. You can also find us on Patreon as well as some Amazon affiliate links if you want to buy some bubble gum or something. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.